WWE, WWE, WWE. My breaking point for my temper has exploded with this pay-per-view. This was not a good pay-per-view in my opinion. This is probably worse than the Bash. Maybe not ratings-wise, but good God, at least the Bash had a very good match on there. Not more than very, a tremendous match on there. This pay-per-view was, what? Ugh. Let's just get this over with. We start the show off with Big Show and Chris Jericho versus MVP and Mark Henry for the tag titles. This was shit. This was a star three quarter. Horrible opener. Uh, the Canadian crowd immediately started cheering on Jericho and show, which they always do. Canada just loves to cheer on the the, the faces, the, the heels for some reason. Just like SummerSlam 2004. But, such slow. Never really got good. You know, they were getting there and then... Didn't like the match at all. Not the pacing. And, and Superman Sky made a good point. Mark Henry is the sacrificial lamb. They used, like, you know, the guys that they beat up on. They had Mar they were beating up on Mark Henry. And they were, they were making, like, Mark Henry needed to make the hot tag to MVP. Like, how does that make sense? It should be the other way around. You should be counting on MVP. And MVP trying to get the hot tag into Mark Henry. Mark Henry clearing house. But that didn't happen. Match ends with Big Show with a knockout punch to Mark Henry. Once again, to Mark Henry, wouldn't it have made more sense for it to be MVP, but whatever. And uh, they get the win. Bad match. Star three quarter. Did not like it at all. Next we hit the Miz, Kofi Kingston. I think Ziggler and Morrison probably would have put on a better match. This was still good. I think I'm going to give this three stars. Some people think I'm underrating it. Some people thought it was like, in my Skype chat, some thought it was like three and a quarter, three and a half. I thought it was good, you know, for the most part. But like I said, I do think that more. I still say that Morrison Ziggler probably would have put on a better match. Uh, but they probably did this because maybe Kofi got upset for, for being pulled off the SummerSlam card. And I know that they didn't really have a finish plan for Morrison Ziggler. But really, I think Morrison Ziggler would have been a better match. I'm going to give this three stars. Still good. But I think Morrison Ziggler would have been better. Next, we get to DX versus Lexi Smith Chicago Anywhere. This was the match of the night, in my opinion. Three and three quarter stars. This match was very, very, very good. I mean, obviously, I knew Triple H wouldn't take the job. Yes, I know I'm spoiling it. But um, I really thought that he would somehow be involved in it. Really, if you, if you want to if you want to think of a way to be completely not involved with the finish at all, Triple H did that. Triple H was backstage, got beat up by the Legacy, and the Legacy bit, and Le Shawn Michaels fought the Legacy for like the last five minutes of the match, and then they made Shawn tap, like in a double team. Triple H wasn't even fucking there. Talk... The, like, going to the farthest extreme to not put someone over. That's just bewildering. But it was still a very fun match. I really love this match. There was a very funny scene where they did a double submission on Cody Rhodes onto a chair that looked like they were humping Cody Rhodes. It was pretty funny, no joke. And I really did enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, at, at three and three quarter, this was the match of the night. It was a very good match, in my opinion. Uh, I liked it more than their SummerSlam match, actually. Even though some people hated their SummerSlam match, I kind of enjoyed their SummerSlam match. I thought this match was better. Okay, next we get to... Oh my god, Kamus 3 Kali, this was fucking atrocious. This was worse than their SummerSlam match. That's very hard to do. I mean, I, I thought the SummerSlam match was okay. I think I gave it two, two and a quarter. But good god, this gets half a star. This was bullshit. This was so much worse. And that says something. I saw some people on Skype giving this negative three stars, negative two stars. There was some guy who said this was worse than Charmel Jenna. Mm, I wouldn't go to that extreme, but it was still crap. It was still absolutely horrible. Half a star for me. This was, this is the worst match of the year besides Jenna Charmel, in my opinion. This match was horrible. Next, let's get to Christian William Regal. This was very good. Well, not very good, but pretty good. Three and a quarter stars. I did enjoy it. It was a nice technical little match. At first, I kind of forgot, but now I'm kind of like remembering little by little what happened. I remember seeing the match. But, like, uh, after the match, I like, couldn't remember. But I, I'm remembering now. It was a fun, you know, little technical match. I kind of like the finish. Uh, I didn't really like the Ezekiel and Kozlov getting kicked out. I thought it would have been better for them to do something towards the end, then get kicked out. I didn't really like getting kicked off off the start. I thought they could have contributed to the story of the match. But it was still a very fun match. I'm going to give this three and a quarter stars. It was the second best match of the night. Next we get to Orton Cena. God, it was this disappointing. Two and three quarter. They had a good build. And Trey Mark kept saying, I was like, Come on, this is getting boring. He's like, it's a big build, man. They're going to build to something epic. The build was like 16 minutes. And then the epic part was like 2 minutes. And the ending was weak. You know, Orton's arm around his neck. Ugh, come on. Weak ending. Cena won, which I'm not too big on. 
I thought I thought for sure we were gonna have Orton Triple H at Hell in a Cell, and I know that the Cell match is gonna be for the title. And everyone's saying, "Oh, Cena and DX versus Legacy for the title." I think personally, I think it would be Rhodes versus DiBiase versus Orton versus Cena versus Triple H versus Shawn. And but because I also know they want to do, the, but I also know they want to do the Ted DiBiase face turn, and it's kind of easier to do that if it's a tag match than if than if they're on their own. But still, this was an okay match, two and three quarter. Really, they did a lot of build, but they never really got to it. They were, once, they, once they really started to get the match going, they, they ended it. And a bad ending. Two and three quarter. Then we get to the most disappointing match of the year. I thought this match would be awesome. And oh my god, was it sad. I feel bad. Whoever ordered this pay-per-view. I know a lot of people who ordered this pay-per-view just for this match. And I feel bad for you, ladies and gentlemen. God, was this bad. They ended at seven minutes. With Taker giving Punk the Gogo Plata and Punk taps out. And Teddy Long says, I'm sorry, but this match must be restarted. Because if you remember, and after like, this was like after three minutes. He didn't come out immediately. He waited like three minutes. And then he said, because as you remember, Vicky Guerrero banned the Gogo Plata from the WWE last year. Heads up, in Taker's feud against the Big Show, he used the Gogo Plata several times. Yes, he did. That's stupid. But whatever, they, they restarted the match. And they kind of did a Montreal screw job number two. Where Punk made Taker submit. Well, he, he put on the Anaconda Vice. Like, Taker was going for the last ride. Punk got out of it. Chop block. Taker was pretty weak. Chop block. And then he gave Taker the Anaconda Vice. Taker, like, put his arm down like that. But he never really tapped. He was like this. Just moving his arms around. And the ref rang the bell. And he ran up the ramp and gave it to CM Punk. While Teddy Long just looked on the ring like this. And Punk was cheering on it. Taker was like, what? What? Now, I understand what you're doing, you know, trying to make Kenny look heel, because I know Vince did tell Teddy they need to do something epic. But, at the bash, yes, they hyped it up very well, going to the bash, that Teddy had to do something epic. Did they do it at Night of Champions? No. Did they do it at SummerSlam? No. Did they do it up to Breaking Point? No. The SmackDown before Breaking Point, I think one week before, Vince said, I think one time, I expect something good for Breaking Point. I wasn't even at the end of the show, it was kind of like in the early beginning. I expect something big at Breaking Point. Does it make sense? Yes, technically it does. Did they hype it up as much? No. Nine min Was the match only nine minutes? Yes, and it was going really good too, I must say. It was going really good. And did they fuck it up? Yes, they did. Ah, uh, God, this was so disappointing. Two and a half stars for me. God, everyone on Skype was going insane after this match. What the fuck was that? Fuck you, WWE. I was thinking this was going to be like a 6.5, 6.75. This gets a 5.5 for me. This is their worst show this year. Actually, probably a 5.25. I don't know. This was a horrible... I wouldn't say it was horrible. This is the worst Maxi Tours pay-per-view this year that I've seen because I saw Victory Road. But this was WB's, definitely WB's worst pay-per-view this year. Bar none. How on the sells next month? Maybe that'll be really good. I mean, we thought at first this pay-per-view would be bad. And then going into it, it actually had a good card. But with the main events, they just fell flat on their asses. If the main event had three and a half stars or more, this would easily be a 7.5, 7.75 pay-per-view. But you know what? WB fucked it up. Okay, I'm Big Rat. 3, 10. Don't watch this pay-per-view, guys. That's why I gave away the results for a lot of matches. I don't want you to see it. I'm out, guys. See ya.